Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and today I'm going to be reviewing the Peter Samuelson Live Masterclass from Vanishing Inc. Before we do that, can you please like and subscribe? Check out CardMagicCourse.com. It's really good, um, but see what other people have got to say about it. Go to CardMagicCourse.com and see the testimonials from real-life members and, of course, some rather well-known magicians there. And, uh, and ask me any questions you like about that in the comments, and I shall answer them. Uh, over 400 videos, live sessions. If you love this, you will love that. Or if you like this, you'll love that. And that's what I say, isn't it? But you get what I mean. Uh, so check that out. And uh, do the like, subscribe, share, etc. That'll be great. Uh, I'm really glad I saw this. I've just spent two days uh, watching four, more than four hours, four, like six hours of this. Um, basically, it was hard to catch up with the, the Masterclass Live. Not, I know I've done a lot of Vanishing Ink reviews uh, this last couple of weeks because that's kind of what I'm getting. It's a bit Vanishing Ink heavy, but uh, it's good stuff and I think you should know about it. Especially this. I didn't know much about Peter Samuelson. I don't know why. Uh, I kind of knew who he was, like I said, but I didn't really know his stuff. I think it's because his book, Theatrical Close-Up, isn't really available anymore, and it's going to be at some point, which we found out, uh, which is very exciting after watching this. But my friend Stephen Steele um, uh, emailed me and said, look, I've just watched this, and I think you'd love it. You've, you've got to watch it. It's great. I, was, you know, I felt really sort of uh, inspired afterwards. Uh, so I thought, well, I, I better give it a, give it a go. And I did, and I couldn't stop watching it. It was one of those things that every time I got 20 minutes, I was like, I'm going to watch some more. It was great. And Peter's someone that has lived and breathed it. You know, he's done it for a long time. His stories, you know, he tells stories about Slydini and Vernon and, and pretty much everybody you can think of. And he's, he's kind of walked to the walk. And, you know, he, even though most people that teach have, you know, for, for that, when you've got that much experience, you've got a lot to impart. And he did have a lot to, to tell us. Which is great, and as he kept saying, he said, "You know, I'm knowing, I know I'm going through this quickly, but the point is that you can go back and watch it. And I'd rather give you almost too much. Uh, it's not exact words, than not enough. And I, it, it, uh, it was so full. And I think after every session, everybody was like, God, it's just so we, we've learned so much. And you felt a little bit overwhelmed, not because of the way it was done, just because there was so much there. Because again, with that experience, and because he works stage, he does lots of different kind of things. So in session one, we had cards, and you know, even though I'm a love my cards, part of me goes, oh, I don't want to watch. <laughs> I'm reading about cards at the moment. It's kind of my life. And uh, but when he's got that, he's one of these people that will take brilliant routines and keep working on them and keep working on them. And his whole thing was, this whole thing is about development. It's the theme running through the whole thing is that I've done this since whenever, you know, but I'm still developing it and still working on it. So we had this New York Transpo, which is a version of Red Hot Mama, the Chicago opener. And when he performed it, it just fooled me. It was like, it's, because I do, I don't look at it and go, work, work this out. I was just watching it and going, it's just so clean. It's just so clean, so easy. You know, there's no... I was looking for the doubles and all that, and it didn't seem to be any. And then I kind of got an idea of what may be going on. But he then taught his original version of it, which I still think is brilliant, you know, without this extra, all these extra convincers. But, you know, it's a really, really lovely version of it. Uh, and then went on to show the development of it. And, and again, it was it's lovely to see someone that's been doing tricks for so long that already worked, but just don't stop working on it. And this was no more apparent than in the next routine, which he's recently done on Penn and Teller which is the body snatches routine. Now, you can tell by the title of the book, Theatrical Close-Up, he is somebody that, that is into putting the theatrics and the depth onto magic. It's not good enough just to do the trick. Well, I'm lying. Maybe he did sort of say sometimes it is. The trick will speak to itself. But, but we can put all this what, why and how onto it and give it so much meaning. And, you know, we do see quite a lot of people, I see quite a lot of people that I feel shoehorn meaning onto magic. It's like, well, if I could kind of say a thing and it kind of works, that'll do. But as he said, he spent months and months, weeks and weeks with directors working on specific routines just to get, give them that meaning that actually makes complete sense. And body snatches, you know, I think card tricks and stories sometimes just don't really work. And this totally did. And you must watch it, the, um, his version of this. It's just brilliant. And it's it's the based on the well I remember seeing the Tommy Wonder uh, wild card tame card and I remember the first time I saw tame card it was in amongst a load of other card tricks and that was a trick that stuck out I just thought it looks like real magic and I think it is absolutely and card shark actually make that now and I've got a version it's just brilliant but anyway so he takes the that which is a wild card principle 
um, gives it this story, gives it loads of meaning, this body snatches thing, and the way it, it's just brilliant. And as Penn and Teller said when they watched it, you know, it, it's proper storytelling. It's, it's really, a, I don't think that was the exact words they use. Um, but anyway, I'm not, I said that I wouldn't just run through every single thing, because this is four days worth. This will be about three hours, which is long, you know, long, long for even me. Uh, and I'm going to look because I can't remember all of it. So that was the first one. And then he goes on to the um, Church of the Amazing Spectacles, which is this whole routine that kind of, he, he talks a little bit about each part of the routine throughout. And it's this whole theatrical thing he's got where the theme is a church. It's like one of those church meetings where it's hallelujah and everything's going on. I can imagine it being an absolute ball to perform and he's and brilliant magic so he did an, any card at any number and it was just brilliant he uses a prop that one of those things that we've probably got somewhere and you just realize how good that prop is and it again completely got me just brilliant and he's talking through it obviously because this is on zoom so he can't perform it but interestingly the supplementary materials to this were absolutely brilliant each time he'd got like lecture notes basically taking you through each bit so you've got the video and you've got the notes uh, and you've got video, you know, he's got on the next bit. Well, let's go on to it. The coin, uh, the next, so the theme of that was cards. The second was metal. So we've got a coin routine called Mimetic Slow Mo, which again is just beautiful one coin routine that isn't like bang, bang, bang. It's just like it goes, it comes back. It's t it's just every everything's justified. And he does have this thing in it, you know, later on when he talks about, you know, how do you justify each movement? You know, well, there are these ways of justifying. There's logic, there's emotion. And again, he tells this great story about Slidini and a chop cup, and he's got all this context and all these anecdotes that back it up, which, which just make it so joyous. It's a real joy. Um, and then linking finger rings, which is, you know, I'm, I've read linking finger ring routines. I've seen people perform them, but to see it explained this way and to show you the different rings you can get. I'm sure David Regal was very busy after this because the minute he talked about that, that ring, I just I nearly bought one. And I thought, I can't, I can't, I can't. Um, because the soon as he showed me that close up and don't get me wrong, I've seen linking finger rings in my own show many times. But when you see when he's talking you through that Quran and link, it is. I think one of the most beautiful pieces of magic I've ever seen. It's so lovely and it made me go, I really, really want to do that. And then I stopped because I thought, you've got enough, Steve, but I'm sure I'll have it by the end of the month. But there you go. Um, I think it's been a bit wild for me to ask to review it. <laughs> I just wondered if I could review the thing. Anyway. Um, and then the, the this lovely... Um, the... The, 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 the ring and rope routine. We all love a ring and rope routine. It's great the way he did it as well. He had little clamps everywhere for when the person was holding the ring. Because uh, he goes from a ring and rope, and then he goes down to a finger ring, a borrowed ring, and then he has this rose. This, this, um, this, it's on a rose in a little bag on the bottom of a rose, and he talks us through that, which is great. I'm doing exactly what I said I wouldn't do. I'm going through the whole thing. Right. And then... <laughs> how can I not? It's just brilliant. Right, I won't do the last two weeks. I'll do this. Love locks. This is just great. And again, probably not a routine that I would do. Um, but that was the point of this. And like he said, he wanted to give skills and tools and techniques that we could transfer to anything. It, well, I wouldn't do it just because I don't like it. It's brilliant. But I'm not in, I don't really like those routines where you get lots of locks. It's just not really me. But he gives it so much meaning. The theatrics gets two people out, you know, two people that have maybe been married for a long time. And he gets the guy to repropose to the woman to get the key to the heart box. And it just... I just love, you, you can tell, I just had such a great time. It was very inspirational. Um, the, the third week was about stagecraft, which is so important. And I'm not, again, I'm not going to go, because I think this will ruin it if I start telling what he said. I don't want to share everything he said, but um, I did just adore his heartstrings gypsy thread routine. It's one of the few routines that I've seen someone do with gypsy thread that really moved me because I could see from what he was saying it was coming from somewhere real. It was coming from real experience. Or maybe it wasn't because he's a good actor, he's a good performer, he's done improv a lot. So it could, it could, but I just felt that there was something there that was coming from real stories to, that it was actually about his life. And, and it made me think again, which is a nightmare at the moment, oh, I want to put a similar thing, not with the script, which you incidentally can buy. I think it's that script you can buy, yes, with a music or is that from another routine? But... Um, which I think is, it seemed very personal to him, but um, it was uh, it was just beautiful. I, I just thought it was absolutely beautiful. And it made me think, God, it just things like that gypsy thread and actually all the routines he does, because they're so simple in plot, not in performance, but in to understand from lay people. And again, we have someone with that kind of experience. Uh, they're, they're almost, 
easier to put meaning on because there's not there's not all these tiny little details we've got to justify and this was just a just a wonderful really good example um and he, <laughs> he's got this i'm gonna blast forward he's just got the, he got this little one of those string pipes out and he, he does this thing about crafting kids toys you know when you go kid, and he gets his string pipe out and i'm like well i don't want to do that and i nearly kind of dismissed that bit and then he does this amazing production of like a cracker jacks and biscuits out of the string pipe and and then he's got another one and it again it, i just put a huge smile on my face i could just see how this could work so well in certain contexts and then he pulls his phone out of one uh, just lovely and then um it does more with the the, the church uh, routine with these coins which is again you know collecting the coins in the cup for the church and then finish yourself with a with a snowstorm which is just great and it just goes to prove you don't need um, an expensive setup you know you, you know the the two grand chair or whatever uh, which don't get me wrong is lovely to have and I wouldn't mind mine myself thank you very much but you know with a fan and it's just a really lovely like getting inside the snowstorm and we're very earnest and as he said he is very earnest it doesn't feel like he's kind of doing some cheesy script it, it, it comes it feels like it comes from somewhere very human and again it was totally inspirational I really really loved this and and at the end, there was a really lovely moment of the chat. You know, you get the Zoom chat, you get free sessions, then the Zoom chat Q&A, and loads of stuff came out of that. Uh, but I really liked the very, very end was really, really nice. It was somebody popped up that said, oh, I used to, I was the manager of this, uh, this theatre group or theatre in, in Chicago. And it's like, oh, and you see all this nostalgia come back. And the whole thing almost finishes with this other person that's popped up on the Zoom chat saying... Um, uh, something like I'm, I'm a better improviser than I am magician and I think that's more important and it reminded me of something that John Carney said on the Insider podcast which I really recommend listening to that two-parter which I haven't listened to part two yet uh, with Damien Jennings a vanishing podcast so John Carney said if, he said if people like you that's more important and it's more important than the quality of the magic trick that you do now obviously John Carney is someone that's very into the quality of magic but what he's trying to say is this other stuff these other skills just enhance it so much and they take the heat off having to have this perfect magic trick and people will remember the magic trick as being perfect because it's got all this this other stuff on it and and I and Peter said at the end that was I think his his thing at the end was that he wanted to give us the tools the techniques and and to show us sort of this variety of stuff that we could go off and and genuinely learn from and use and I think he absolutely did that there is so much more to say I know this is a long review anyway um but this isn't live anymore and I didn't watch this live and it's fine that you feel like you're watching it live when you're watching it so you know don't with this stuff and again no affiliation I know I keep saying it but people still say to me sometimes oh you do the Vanishing Ink reviews and it's like no I do all reviews um so there's, there really is I don't get any affi aff affiliate fee or anything but I would say to go back and watch these don't feel like because date's gone you can't watch them because you keep them forever you get the materials and it's it's the most I've learned in a long time, I think, from from just watching something like that. And it's really, I'm really glad I've watched it now because the girl, I'm working on some theatrical stuff myself or a show myself, and it's just helped me a great deal. But not just for that, for all close-up, I think. So there you go, I'll take a breath now. Um, Peter Samuelson, live, check it out. The links will be below. Thank you for allowing me to watch this uh, Vanish Ink, and thank you, Peter, for making this. And do check out all his stuff and his links on YouTube. You'll be able to find it. Give it a but I'll put them down below. And if I forget, nudge me. Uh, take care. Do check out cardmagiccourse.com. Get your free spread card download. Cardmagiccourse.com forward slash cull. And uh, like and subscribe. Do all the good stuff. And take care. <laughs>